welcome here. Maybe a few a few minutes. Uh, I've heard that there are hot dogs outside. So have you tried uh, some hot dogs already? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's talk about some uh, maybe more um, uh, out of uh, out of uh, everyday life uh, things about uh, math and about uh, uh, my experience, uh, which I'm trying to use math in my uh, in my everyday uh, life. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> maybe like a few words uh, why I built this story and what is the reason behind it. So probably the most uh, important thing that I love puzzles and uh, basically the math is behind puzzles I, I'm solving uh, in every day and I was used to solve in my uh, school days or uni university. So maybe a question to you, is there anybody who loves to solve puzzles as well? Any kind of puzzle. Okay, so that's great. And maybe one more question like, is there any math lovers who love math? It's almost the same people. Okay, who loved uh, math in, uh, in the school? Okay, more people loved uh, math in the school <laughs> than they are loving now. So okay, maybe some, uh, we had good uh, math teachers. Maybe that's, uh, that's why, I don't know, but we will see. Uh, so basically, my name is uh, Vita Stoyanskas, and uh, I will tell about uh, my experience to build new engineering branch. And I will try to explain how math is helping uh, for me to, uh, to do my job uh, in, in, uh, in the company where I'm working. But uh, uh, a little bit context uh, and uh, how, I will, uh, how I will come up to the math. So I, I am working in the company which grows. Uh, so uh, this company just uh, started to build, uh, just open a new branch in Vilnius. Uh, there was originally uh, like more than 100 people working in Konas and we are like split at the engineering offices and we started to build something new. And this company tripled the employee size in two years, uh, became laureate of Deloitte Fast 50 nomination. So we are, uh, I'm working in the growth environment and my colleagues are also working in the grown growth environment. So uh, my story is about, uh, about the company which, uh, which grows. Uh, and uh, how math can, uh, can help to, uh, to work in this environment and how math can help uh, for me to do my job to, uh, to build uh, new engineering teams. So it, for similar questions, I usually have two types of answers. There is short uh, answer and there is long answer. So I will start with the short one. And the short uh, is following. So of course, math functions like addition or multiplication are the easiest way to scale something, including engineering teams or in our scale, in our, uh, in our uh, case, uh, engineering offices. So we just like decided to have additional. So you can see that we added one more office or like we multiplied. But uh, of course, I will not uh, talk today about, the, about this uh, type of uh, math benefits. I will talk about the others. So uh, the other answer is following as well. And uh, I will start this uh, answer from the context, uh, what's happening in the companies which grows. So uh, at least this is like applies for our company, but I believe uh, that, uh, that this is very similar to, to the other companies which are growing as well. So there are like uh, a lot of people joining, uh, new projects uh, coming up, um, new initiatives uh, starting and so on and so on. And uh, the knowledge how to deal with that uh, big, bigger size and bigger scope or, or rules or processes, whatever you can call it, but I think the most important is knowledge, is not, uh, is not coming uh, also at the same speed, like the numbers. So the lack of order or constant change is uh, the environment where such companies are like uh, working into. Uh, then, of course, there are opportunities for everybody in the company who is like uh, seeing some, uh, some issues, some, uh, some things which can be improved and so on. So everybody in the company is like able to, uh, to take the initiative to solve some things and to solve it not only for himself, but for the whole company. And then, uh, which leads us to the third point that uh, the decisions uh, uh, are coming not only from the top, uh, uh, from the management perspective, not from top down, but also from bottom up. And like uh, there are multiple, uh, multiple uh, points of uh, activities, multiple points of uh, initiatives coming inside of the company. So this is the environment uh, in which uh, uh, we are working, in which we are operating. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun, but it's also like uh, a, a task for us um, 
for, for people who are working in such companies, we try to understand how we actually work, what is happening inside of the company. So we tried to answer, uh, we started to answer this uh, question by just like sharing different articles about, um, about uh, innovative management styles, about uh, like structures inside of such companies in our internet. And here you can see like just a few of them which, um, which I'm discussing about, uh, uh, about uh, how such companies work. And we started to explore different topics. So I will go into some of them in more detailed way. So one of the approach uh, we started to, um, uh, to dig into was management 3.0. Has anybody heard this buzzword? Okay, has, uh, okay, so it's quite new buzzword, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, I think that this concept uh, is best ex uh, explained in comparison with like uh, management 1.0 and management 2.0. So 1.0 is rather about manufacturing companies about companies which are like focusing into production result, into numbers, into something. Uh, 2.0 is already thinking not about the result, but about people who work in the companies, but it's still like uh, thinking about the people and making decisions from the management perspective. And management 3.0 is uh, thinking about the people, but also giving the decision power to the people to, to decide what uh, what is the best for the company, what is the best for the, uh, for the people. But it's uh, very important in this, uh, in this approach that uh, not only decision power has to be given to the people, but also the, the needed support uh, has to be given uh, for them. And this needed support is like um, a lot of things. Uh, for example, data for the decision making, uh, the guidance for the decision, uh, the support uh, for the decisions as well. So uh, we explored this topic, went to the trainings, started some initiatives in the company, uh, started to explore deeply. But this uh, was not uh, uh, the only approach we explored and tried to fit uh, like what is really happening uh, uh, in our everyday life. So this was interesting because it's, uh, it's named after the color. So teal is uh, the name of the color which is similar to cyan. And uh, it's, uh, the color of the name is uh, after the some type of duck which has this color on, on its head. So it's uh, depicted on the right uh, on, the, on the slide. Uh, so the uh, author of, of this concept like, uh, was also uh, uh, saying that self-management is very important and um, like auto autonomous uh, subsystems, sub, uh, sub parts of the company uh, has to have accountability, has to have uh, power of, the, of making initiatives and also they have to coordinate within uh, themselves. Uh, the other important aspect in this, uh, in this approach was wholeness. Um, it's interesting, but it's not, not like very, uh, it's interesting name, but it's not very, uh, how to say, special, because it's uh, saying that rather for, uh, from the people who, uh, who have very narrow specialization area and very narrow contribution area in the company, they have like, everybody of us have hobbies, uh, interests like uh, areas of, uh, of our like ideas and so on. So maybe we can use all these like connections inside of our company and uh, contribute something uh, in some projects in some areas uh, using our whole uh, activities. And uh, the last one, evolutionary purpose, it's very similar to the agile concept. Uh, so it's uh, like in agile environment, uh, we are working in iterations, we are delivering uh, some product uh, regularly, we are like uh, showing demos and we are receiving feedback. And uh, this feedback is like, um, enables us to change our directions, like uh, where we want to go or where the, uh, the stakeholders uh, think that we should, should be going. Uh, so it's the same, evolutionary purpose is listen, listening to the outer world and changing directions accordingly if you need to change. Uh, which is also very similar to the network organization. Uh, maybe in our uh, everyday life, in, in our workplaces, it's more common to have hierarchy, which is opposite of the network. And uh, network environment is very common to find in the neighborhoods, in leisure activities between your friends, maybe some kind of business ventures, where you have ties between network members, but these ties are made like on some kind of purpose and like they are temporary at some particular time like you have the ties after this is like finished you already don't have the ties 
so in hierarchy you can have predictability, you have coordination because like it's fixed and it's more predictable. And in network, like you have the collective intelligence, which like the collective group of people like um, has some more information than like uh, hierarchy or the or some kind of uh, I don't know management. Uh, I like this comparison between hierarchy and network. So like in hierarchy, we have specialization. Like I said in this uh, uh, teal approach, uh, the wholeness is the opposite of specialization, and specialization is very narrow uh, area of your expertise. Uh, then you also have efficiency, which is the results of the numbers. Like you have, the, uh, you have to produce some kind of number, some kind of result. Uh, centralization is like centralized decision power, centralized uh, initiatives. And exploitation is the use of resources, the benefiting of resources what the uh, organization has. And in network it's vice versa. So we have generalization, you have multiple areas of your contribution, multiple like uh, initiatives coming from each uh, member of network. Effect, effic effic effectivity is like vice versa to uh, efficiency, it's like effect, making a change, uh, making a result. Uh, decentralized uh, like areas of the initiatives and decentralized uh, decision power. And you also have a lot of exploration which uh, which is actually very very nice to have in such organizations. Like you, all the time you can have you can explore new things, you can learn new things in this chaotic environment. Uh, which uh, also like brings us to the other concept. Uh, also can be used to explain in such growing organizations. Chaos theory, uh, like in the common language, it's more uh, it's more uh, easier to. Um, uh, to find the definition that it's state of disorder, so why like, chaos is disorder. But uh, if, you if you go into this concept more deeply and you will try to understand it and you will try to explain it, you will find uh, more subsystems in, in, the, in the whole environment. And you will understand that these subsystems are basically uh, affecting each other and they are affecting the whole, um, uh, the whole uh, system uh, and making some changes which can be predicted. So this uh, effect of subsystems is also known as butterfly effect. Uh, like uh, there was a theory that uh, butterfly moving wings in one country can cause hurricanes in another country. But uh, I myself liked uh, this article which is totally from another area and I was accidentally reading just before the, um, this presentation, I was reading the article about machine learning. And I found that one type of machine learning, uh, particularly unsupervised learning, is very, uh, very similar to what is happening to such organizations. So uh, it is like a situation when you have no labels, you don't have feedback, and you find hidden structure in the data. <laughs> so that was a very uh, funny uh, comparison for me. Uh, so I was like uh, describing the uh, approaches uh, in uh, which can explain how growing organizations work, but uh, like um, the title of my presentation is how math uh, can help uh, in these organizations, how, how math can help to scale uh, the teams and, and organization, organizations themselves. So the question here is uh, why math is important. And I have uh, several reasons for that. So one reason is like very obvious. <laughs> It's IT, uh, we're all IT, I'm working in IT, and uh, math and IT in uh, some kind of abstraction layer, we are operating uh, numbers. So it's like very, very obvious reason, but it's not the major one. Uh, the other reason uh, is that uh, why math is important, that uh, math uh, has some links with well-being. And there are studies uh, which connect uh, the test scores of uh, student uh, results in math with a prediction of country economy health. So like uh, scientist Eric Hanushek is like having such predictions and he is particularly using program for international student assessment, which consists for, uh, from several uh, results from math, science and reading. But this is also not uh, the most important uh, reason why math is important. Uh, more important reason is that uh, math ha uh, has uh, some kind of influence uh, uh, for mindset. And uh, at least uh, this is uh, qu quite many math scientists are telling uh, these things. So for example, uh, math scientists are able to discuss the definitions. They are starting to, uh, to talk about problems by like uh, defining the, some concepts, some, some important cost, concepts. They're spending quite a lot of time to, uh, 
to discuss the best way of, uh, of these concepts definitions. And um, by discussing, they also using the samples of data uh, for, uh, for these definitions. Like, of course, there is samples of data which are proving the, uh, the definitions. Of course, there are counterexamples. And uh, they are also able to admit that they are often wrong. So, uh, of course, like by working in uh, solving puzzles, uh, you have to, uh, to try a lot of times um, and to be a lot of times wrong uh, once you succeed. And uh, also, uh, they're able to think about the future. They can, uh, they can think about possible consequences of, uh, of some claims. Uh, so it's uh, the prediction, the thinking about the effect, what, is, what can be changed. It's also one of the uh, traits of, uh, of the mass uh, lovers. But I personally liked uh, the other uh, mindset um, uh, traits uh, uh, better. So uh, at least Andrew Wiles, uh, who solved uh, for 100, 100 years uh, old uh, theorem, he's telling that um, a mathematician is the person who is able to live for some time being stuck. Well, I understand that this guy who was trying to solve this problem, he was stuck for some time. So like he spent some years by, by trying to, to solve it. But uh, I think this is, this is also for math lovers and uh, for puzzle solvers. So like to be patient, to, be, uh, to accept the state and not to worry, just move on is uh, one of the traits uh, in this area. And of course, like you know, uh, other similar concepts like grit or growth mindset. Has anybody heard about uh, growth mindset? CR? No? Yeah, okay, so well, I thought it's known. Uh, actually, Google uh, shared uh, uh, project Oxygen Data, which is like about uh, how Google is like um, about Google's approach to management. So uh, in this um, uh, in this data, there is also like a new managers training, and uh, there is a part about growth mindset, uh, which is very similar to to this thing that accepting being stuck and just like moving forward, uh, like is is really important. But I personally like uh, this uh, the the last uh, part about mindset uh, myself best, uh, which is also simi uh, similar to me. I don't have good memory. I don't know if I'm a good mathematician, but at least I don't have good memory for certain things. <laughs> but, so Andrew Wiles, uh, the same guy who solved this uh, theorem, uh, is telling that if you have uh, good, uh, bad memory, so basically you are forgetting uh, your failures and you are like uh, going one more time to solve uh, the same puzzles. So he's saying that good memory is preventing from trying one more time and most probably that good mathemat mathematicians don't have uh, good memory, they have, they have bad memory. Okay, so we have discussed the environment of growing organizations. We have discussed why math is important and uh, I'm going back to the problem of growing organizations. And uh, so growing organization is like such organization where you don't have, uh, you are not able to predict the outcome very well. Uh, there are a lot of things happening in such organization, a lot of initiatives, initiatives coming up. Uh, you are more uh, exploring than exploiting. You are learning new things than like just benefiting from resources. And most probably that this organization is decentralized. So there are a lot of uh, areas of initiatives, a lot of areas which are like able to make uh, the decisions and move them in the, in the uh, company. Uh, the centralized organizations are quicker uh, for, some, for making some uh, local decisions because they have some local knowledge and they are like better to, uh, to work in ambiguous uh, situations. Uh, and it's also interesting idea that uh, the organizations themselves can be also centralized and decentralized in the same uh, in the same time. So th there could be centralization on the business processes, on some like very high level rules, but uh, there could be decentralization on on the business decisions which can which can be made uh, locally in some particular parts of such organizations. So in this situation, how math could help? Uh, in such growing organization. So of course, uh, the math mindset is the most important thing and uh, which uh, I'm promoting in, in the new branch uh, which I'm currently building. Uh, and this mindset, at least the promotion, the process of, uh, of mindset promotion is helping to, uh, to solve a lot of different uh, problems like to start the projects or not to start the projects, to hire people or not to hire people everyday projects and so on. But uh, the, there is like uh, uh, a question, what kind of, uh, 
what kind of idea, what kind of explanation could be uh, the best to, uh, uh, to promote math in the organization. So uh, we actually choose the process of puzzle solving, which consists from four steps. Uh, it's described by Hungarian mathematician uh, in already 1945. I just accidentally came up to, uh, uh, with this book. Uh, I found this book in Stanford University bookstore and I liked it very much. I actually recommend it to uh, everyone. Uh, because like it's really old and it's like uh, it can be applied to like every day now. So there, there are four steps and there is step number one. So question to, to you, what do you think is the first step in the puzzle solving? Any ideas? What is the most important thing? Actually, I think um, I had one interesting test. I was um, uh, talking about the mass importance in my uh, school. Uh, I was learning in Konas, and uh, actually the guys answered to this question very quickly. So don't be shy, try to do shoot some attempts. <laughs> Re I understand the problem, right? Uh, are you cheating or not? <laughs> no. Okay, but that's right. Yeah. Yeah, but really, really, understand the problem is the first, the, the major step. So basically, you have to to read uh, what is like unknown, try to uh, make the correct formulation. Uh, you can also have some data uh, together with the problem, so you have to understand the data what is coming to the, with the problem. And you have to understand the conditions, uh, what you can use here. So understanding the problem is totally the major, uh, the most important thing. And uh, in my cases, like from this year, which I spent here, so I was like reminding to my colleagues a lot of time uh, about this uh, particular step. And then there is the second step in this process. Any ideas? Understand constraints? Mm, it can be it, probably more like about the first step, but you can think about further and have some ideas. If you understand the problem, what do you do next? Start creating the plan. Start creating the plan, yeah, really, really. That's it. So you have to build the plan. And actually, this uh, building the plan, according to the, uh, George Pola, uh, he is also including some analysis like already in this plan. So this analysis like uh, is uh, the, the steps that you are analyzing if, uh, if you've seen the, this problem before and maybe you have seen uh, similar problems before and you can reuse any, any ideas from these problems which you have solved uh, like uh, you or yourself or, or, or some uh, like colleagues. But then you basically have to build the steps what are, uh, what are needed to, uh, to answer the unknown. You have the data, you have the unknown, and you have to build the, like, uh, the list what brings you from the data to the unknown. So build the plan is uh, step number two. But it's not enough, so we have two more steps, and then the step number three in puzzle solving. Any ideas? Start executing. Start executing, yeah, correct. So you basically carry out the plan, you find the answer, you're finding the unknown, you are doing all the steps what, uh, what you listed in the step number two. And you are also checking each step, uh, which is important. So uh, this is the step number three. But then there is step number four. Uh, kind of. Any other ideas? Check, yes. So you have to look back, you have to check the result, you have to check if you answered your uh, like questions correctly. Uh, and also there is some part of reusability included in this step, so you also can think if you can reuse uh, the result uh, for other problems and maybe like uh, uh, make some lessons learned. So look, this guy in 1945 thought already in Agile principles and <laughs> he was thinking about their usability, about lessons learned and so on. So this is it. This is the answer how we are using uh, math in our branch in, uh, in building uh, the new branch and uh, solving a lot of questions. Uh, we are using mind, uh, math mindset and we are using the four simple steps which are helping to, uh, for us to understand the local areas and to work in, in a very dynamic and growing environment. Thank you. And if you have any questions, so I would be eager to answer. So could you just uh, provide a few examples, like in your expanding processes of managing people in fact, planning for what kinds of tasks 
and how you implemented it, at least one example, how it was, the map was included in this. Uh, so I, maybe I will not go into like a uh, more detailed way, I kind of working in service industry and like we have uh, agreements with our clients, but most of uh, challenges are, there are two parts of challenges. One part of challenges are re related to business. So business like uh, going into, uh, into projects or not going, we are like kind of to start projects, we have to, uh, to win them uh, for the clients. But there are of course some type of uh, projects which is like better not to win maybe. So. Uh, Understanding the, this big situation in this structured way is like helping for us. Uh, then people, again, like uh, we are hiring and we have the options to choose uh, like from different candidates and also like you can use the same approach in hiring to get the data and to make the decision which is like best. Uh, but uh, the other area which is also very interesting is like um, common, uh, common usage like you know everyday life, new office, some things are broken, some things are not working. Uh, like for example, uh, we are based in Vilnius Tech Park. It's a really beautiful place, uh, a lot of green uh, things, green trees, uh, technology companies around, but it's new one. And like we had uh, water uh, leakage in our office like three times this year. <laughs> it was okay, but you know, it's okay, maybe this is like not good situation for the math, but uh, but at some point, when you fix the problem, you can come to a, to a general approach. So, this is like examples. Yeah. Ah, okay. What does math say about distributed project team? Uh, yeah, good question actually. Math says nothing, but if you think about mindset, so probably uh, it would help you to, uh, like, if you're thinking about mindset and if you think that mindset is helping, like, in, uh, I don't know, in unknown situations, so it's, uh, if you share the same mindset in all the team members, so it would help you. It, uh, it, uh, it can help you to find the problems. Distributed teams is about communication, but, uh, if you share the same mindset, it's, uh, it, uh, it makes communication easier. So is it just about the math or the formulas as well? We have formulas in our projects, I guess, because like we kind of uh, have like to... With going with mm. in the project uh, ah. No, 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 no formulas. Formulas are like, um, I think that in our, in our case, uh, because the organization is uh, changing uh, fast and rapidly. So the situations which you are solving are basically changing uh, quite fast. And you maybe you learn to, uh, to solve some kind of situations and you have some rules or processes how to solve the situations, but then after some time, there are different situations. So the same rules are not helping. Mm, I think, uh, yeah, uh, not formula, but the mindset or the step is, yeah, is the same, but uh, like uh, variables are totally different and it's formally different. I would say it this way. I would say it this way. So all the map you wanted to present is displayed in this slide, right? Yes, this is correct. I, I guess that you had higher expectations. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Okay, I will just like contact me. I will lend you this book. <laughs> there is more math in the book. Yeah, but uh, basically this is actually the book uh, uh, about, about the math, about problem solving is, uh, is about these steps. And there are also some, uh, uh, some puzzles included. So it's really good. So if you're looking for more math, I am recommending you the, the book by George Pola, Hungarian mathematician, how to solve it. It's called how to solve it. There, are, uh, there is PDF in the internet as well. So it's, I guess, open, open source. I, I wasn't checking, to be honest, <laughs> but uh, there are quite many versions. But okay, thanks a lot, yeah. thank you, yeah. and uh, yeah.